Hey gang, welcome to your seventh Python 3 tutorial and in this video I want to go through some basic string formatting. Okay, so in the last tutorial we played around with printing out some data to the console over here and when we did that what we did is print out the string then we broke out of the string and we printed out this variable here so we could see it in the console. And that's fine, we can do that. But in this tutorial, I wanna show you a couple of alternative ways to do this, to print out data to the console uh, using some kind of string formatting where we don't have to break out of the string. Because in this example, we did. We broke out of the string right here, added a comma, and then placed the variable. So I'm gonna show you some different options now to output variables and data to the console where we don't have to break out of the string. And we can format that data as well. So first thing, you're going to notice that I've created this lessons folder and this projects folder. And I've already placed this area calc project we did in the last tutorial, which is this, in the projects folder, just to kind of keep things nice and neat. In this lessons folder, I've created this string underscore format dot py file. So that's where we're going to do all this code for this lesson in. Uh, one thing to pay attention to, if we're running this file over here in the console, then ideally what we want to do is navigate into this lessons directory over here. So I'm just going to do that first of all. I'll say CD and then lessons. So now we can run it from this folder. Okay then. So I'm just going to create a couple of variables first of all. Um, and these are going to be random numbers. So I'll say num1 equals and then it's going to be 3.142. And I was going to do pi, but I really don't know it to so many dis uh, different decimal places. So I'm just going to put random numbers there. And then num2. I'm going to set equal to 10 point something. We'll just say like 290, uh, and then 48, something like that. Okay, that'll do. So we've got those two numbers there. And now I want to play around with printing those out to the console. So first of all, we'll do the previous way. So this is what we've been doing in previous tutorials where we can place a comma after the string and then output it separately. So we'd do something like this. We'd say print. And then inside, we could open a string, first of all, and say num1 is. And then I'll close that string, do a comma, and then output the variable. This is how we can output it normally, right? Then I'll add a comma, and I'll add another bit of string to it to say, and num2 is, and then another comma. We're going to output num2 and save it. So now what we're doing is outputting this string, this variable, then this string, and this variable again. And it's all going to be on the same line. So Python doesn't add a line break in here and go to the next line. It adds a space. Whenever it sees this comma and then a variable, it's going to add a space, right? So that's what it's doing between each little thing here. And when we print this, if we run the program, I'm going to say Python, and then it's string underscore format.py. When we run this file, we're going to see if I just make this a little bit bigger first of all, that it's all on the same line. Num1 is num1, this number, and num2 is this number. Cool. So output in that, and that's fine. But what if instead we just want to keep this all within one string? So we don't want to have to keep breaking out the string, then adding a variable, then breaking out again. It's all a bit disjointed. What if we want to do this a slightly different way? Well, we can do that. So I'm going to comment out this for now, and then I'm going to show you two different ways we can do this. So this is using the format method, right? So it's a method that we can use on a string called format. And I'll show you that now. So say we want to print these things out again. We'll say print, and then we'll say num1 is, and then I'm going to come back to this in a minute, right? I'm just going to do like a double dash for now to say we want to output something there. And I'll say and num2 is, and then another double dash, we want to output something there as well. Now, this string can take a method or have a method called dot format. So I'm just using a method on this string, right? Directly on it called format. So when we use this, we can output different variables into the string. So say we want to output a variable there and a variable there. Well, we can do that. And we do that by using curly brace notation. So open and close there. And then we do the same thing over here. Okay. So this is a little bit confusing at first, but what we're going to do is pass variables in here. We're going to pass in num1 and num2, which are these things here, num1 and num2. Okay. Now in these ones, we want to output num1 and num2. So the way this works is by giving these an index. This has an index of zero. This has an index of one. 
So if I want to output this, I need to put zero inside this curly brace. And then if I want to output this, I can put one inside this curly brace. And I could do it vice versa if I wanted to. I don't have to do it in order. I could put one over here and zero over here. But that's not correct because this is actually num2. So I'm going to put zero and one. And then this is going to output those variables. Okay. So let's save it and run it again. And we see exactly the same this time. So num1 is num1 and num2 is num2 over here. All right. Now, the cool thing about this format method is that we can pass in some formatting options to these things right here. So say, for example, I want to say, well, I only want to see three digits here. I don't want to see all this big number. I want to cut it down to size and I want to see just three digits. Well, the way we add some formatting onto these variables is by adding a colon after the number right here, okay, or the index, and then we say how we want to format it. Now, if I want to use the precision formatting option, then it's dot three, all right? And that means basically, I want the precision of this number to be three. I want only three digits to show. So I'm gonna do exactly the same for each one. So colon, first of all, to say we're passing through some formatting options, then dot three to say we want the precision of this number to be three, just three digits to show. So I'm gonna save this now and run this again. And now we can see that we get three digits in each case. We get 3.14, that's three, and 10.3, and that's three as well, okay? Even though it's only got one decimal point and this has got two decimal points, it's still three digits, a one, a zero, and a three, three, a one, and a four. So that's what this precision op uh, option does. So say instead we just wanted three decimal places rather than a precision of three, three numbers. Well, what we can do is add on an F at the end of this to say three floating point numbers, right? Or basically this means three decimal points uh, or three numbers after the decimal point. Well, if I run this again, now we're gonna, oops, I didn't save it. Let's save it first of all. That's always a good idea. I'm gonna clear this as well, just to give us a bit of a room. Okay, so now if we run this again, we're gonna see each one to three decimal points. So that's another cool reason to use this format method rather than this method right here where we don't have any kind of formatting. And also we're not breaking out of the string here, we're inputting these variables in the actual string, which is just a little better as well, all right? We're keeping everything together. But I wanna show you one more way, which is actually my favorite way of formatting strings. Um, and it improves on this just a little bit. So I'm gonna say down here, another comment using f hyphen strings. So this is what I call them, F strings, right? And all we do is put a little F before the string to say that we're formatting that string. So again, I'm gonna do the same thing. And in fact, I'm just gonna comment this dude out. And down here, I'm gonna say print. And we're gonna print out the same thing. We're gonna do a string, first of all. We'll say num1 is, and then a little double dash to say we're gonna come back here and add in a variable shortly. And num2 is, and then another double dash. So we're gonna output these two variables here. Now the way F strings work is just by putting an F in front of the string before we open the string, before that little quotation mark, right? So now we're saying to Python, this is gonna be a formatted string and we wanna output some kind of dynamic data in it and format it. So how do we do that? Well, this time all we do is do curly braces again, but this time we output the variable name here. So I can say num1, and that is gonna to know to look for this num1 variable and output it in this string. And we can only do this because we've placed this F in front of this string, okay? So, same we can do it with this as well. I'm gonna output num2, and now we're outputting these numbers. So if I save this, run this again, we still get the same thing, we're outputting these numbers, but to me, this is much more logical to do it this way, okay? It makes much more sense to output variables like this. And it's simply, it refers to the variable name itself rather than the index of the variables in this function, which is a little less readable in my opinion, right? So we can also format it the same way. So I could say after this one, colon, to say we wanna pass through some formatting options now. And what I wanna do is do a dot four to say, okay, well, I want the precision to be four, but I'm gonna place an F after that to say four decimal places, right? So I'll do the same over here say colon dot four and then f so all the formatting options are the same between this and this but 
it's just that this is a little easier on the eye. There's not as many keystrokes because we don't have to do this whole format function over here. Uh, it just looks a bit nicer as well. So I'm going to save that now. Run this file one more time and you can see now we get them to four decimal places, right? So there we go my friends, this is how we do some basic string formatting and we are going to be using this quite frequently as we go through this series.